Michigan for every dollar spent. Now, show me another industry that has that kind of ROI after two and a half years. You can't. There is no other industry that can spend that much, that fast, and affect so many people so effectively. Six to one. If you remember nothing else, remember that. The media has picked up on it. The legislature is now parody it back to us. It's very compelling. It's easy to remember. And it really makes a great case for the film industry doing what the state asked them to do when we invited them here uh, two and a half years ago. $503 million, over a half a billion dollars in 2010 alone. That's that economic activity that was generated. Show me another industry that can spend a half a billion dollars in the state without polluting, without having to ramp up over a long period of time, and can employ so many people who need work and give them new hope for their new direction. Number three, the net cost to Michigan. You know, you hear a number of $117 million last year. The real number is $84.7 million. And the fact matter is the real number that the cost to stay in the airport year is less because these, these credits are built up and they're paid when the paperwork's all filed and approved. So it actually it's got a kind of a rolling total. In reality, the net cost of the state last year, 28 million bucks. That's, what, that's the honest number when you have a net cost. Now, we're, we're taking it in a more conservative way with George and Young. We told them we don't want to do anything that's easy, easy pickings for the, the critics. So let's do the most conservative way possible. Let's take the full amount owed in the year, even though it hasn't been paid out yet, and let's do the ratio based on that. And it still came out at six to one. The ratio, when you do it against the actual expense, was so high that nobody would believe it, so we didn't do it. So once again, I think it's a We don't have an agenda here other than the truth. Um, the way we reduce that total, 84.7 by the way, is because the states generate a lot of tax revenue in the process. People come in and spend hundreds of million dollars, they pay taxes. So Ernst Young calculated all the taxes being paid to state and local municipalities. The other thing was, uh, Ernst Young took a look at unemployment. And they said, geez, you know, there are an awful lot of people who weren't working before, and that cost the state something, and now they're working and they're paying taxes. That's an interesting swing. Let's look at that. And the range was 0.9 million up to 6.5 million. So we took the 0.9, 900,000, the lowest possible number there, possible, and we collected that. So that's how we got that net cost. Very honest and straightforward. And you should know that this was shared with the MEDC, with the state treasury, and yes, with Governor Snyder's office at the very highest level before the budget came out. So all the key people in the state who were involved with this incentive had full access to Ernst & Young's these numbers beforehand. And I can tell you, not one of them said the methodology was incorrect. Not one of them said it was dishonest or was, was stilted. Everyone who looked at this said, these are straightforward, honest numbers based on the Treasury experience in these two years. So if anybody tells you that the numbers are BS, it's just not true. At least it's not true according to the state of Michigan. And if the governor doesn't want to act on them, that's another story. But it's not because his staff feels that they're not correct. Number four. Here's an incredible one that's often forgotten about. It's per diems. You know per diems aren't eligible for the incentives? You know how much was spent on food in the state of Michigan with per diems that didn't qualify for one nickel? $41.1 million over 2009-2010. How do you think that helped our restaurant industry in the state of Michigan? Mm -hmm. An extra 41 million bucks? You see too many restaurants open in the state? Yeah. 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 Remember, this isn't just about job creation, which has done incredibly well. This is about job preservation. There are a lot of people who still have a job who wouldn't have had a job if the film and TV industry hadn't come along, especially in our hotels and restaurants and service industry to support the business. So. If people lose their jobs, that's a cost to the state. If people get new jobs, that's tax revenue to the state. There's a lot of lives to balance here. And it's not just all numbers on a piece of paper. It's real stories, and there's thousands of them out there. And then number five, uh, according to RCO, using the government's own numbers, uh, almost 4,000 full-time jobs were created by the film industry in 2010 alone, paying an average salary of $64,000. Now, I've lived in 10 states, and Michigan is the least diverse state I've ever seen. We can't afford to take an industry we invited here two and a half years ago, and then tell them we changed our mind and kick them out in, in our hopes to be more business friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
if we kill 4,000 high paying jobs in the hope that down the road our new tax structure will bring hundreds here? It doesn't make sense. So it, you really need to see the Ernst & Young study. Uh, there's an executive summary that's only six pages long. Uh, read that if that's all you can, can get through. I'm not a CPA, but I can handle the executive summary. And then there's over 20 pages of backup material showing the methodologies that were utilized. Once again, nobody stepped up. Even people have been very vocal in the past about all the, the fakery of the film industry. Nobody stepped up and said this report has holes in it. So if there's someone out there who thinks they're smarter than we are, tell us what was wrong with the Ernst Young report. Tell us why those numbers aren't correct. Uh, tell us why Ernst & Young, one of the top accounting companies in the world, didn't do it right. They had to step forward because they can't. I'm going to close up now, but I, I do want to tell you that um, uh, this is not a battle that is lost. I think a lot of big folks just think, I know all of you probably have heard friends and neighbors say, geez, that's a shame of them killing the film incentives. No. Governor Snyder fired a shot over our bow, and now we're out there loading the ammunition up, and the folks in the, the Senate and the folks in the, the House have not spoken yet. And we know that they're listening to us because they're calling Ernst & Young, and they're calling and asking for copies of the report. They're saying, maybe not so fast, Governor Snyder. He's an honorable man, but we think he's wrong. And with your help, we're going to make sure that the legislature helps him realize that. Thanks very much. <laughs> This is DetroitDetroit.com or FilmDetroit.com. All right, there it is. You can go and check it out for yourself and on the phone line. All right, now let's uh, hear from uh, Bill Black, Team Students.